Hello, welcome everyone to this uh, three-part series of A Champion's Mind. My name is Devinder Singh and uh, I welcome you on behalf of uh, Indian Tennis Daily and Heartfulness. So what are these three sessions all about? You know, in tennis and in sports, we can see that the mental part plays a key role in the way that a, an athlete succeeds you know at the highest level the differentiator is at the mental level so being involved with tennis for the last 27 years uh, and being a meditation trainer involved in meditation for the last 16 years with heartfulness i felt that it would be great uh, to give everyone an inside view as well as give them a practical and experiential sessions okay on the tools that they can use so uh, just a brief introduction uh, my name is devinder singh and uh, i've played tennis at the international level was ranked on the atp uh, currently i run uh, shaisha tennis academy ahmedabad and i'm a certified heartfulness meditation trainer now going uh, ahead let us now pause a little bit okay to think about you know a lot of you are players who are watching this when you had your best performance how did you feel on that given day how was your feeling when you had your best performance just close your eyes think about it then i will share with you what the top athletes or what the champions had to say the champions mind is clearly the name because what differentiates a champion from another average competitor is in the mind the difference is in the mind so just think about it okay if you have uh, you know a pen and a paper maybe noted down how did you feel on the day that you actually played great and a lot of you would be uh, sports persons uh, from other sports as well so uh, you know what i'm going to share today will apply equally to all sports so i have uh, with me um, you know findings from the research that what did they say so when the top players and this is across all sports when they were asked you know what were the common factors for success they mentioned confidence they mentioned good concentration and they mentioned emotional and mental control let these words just hang in just understand them confidence good concentration emotional and mental factors you know uh, one of the reasons uh, for doing this uh, sessions along with indian tennis daily and heartfulness at this point in time is almost the sports are not being held on the ground what a lot of players are doing fitness but one of those important factors that actually differentiates uh, the top player from an average competitor are the mental factors which as you all might be aware are practiced the least so it brought me uh, brought back memories uh, or a story uh, which i had heard and which has stayed with me since my childhood now it is about those two woodcutters you some of you would have heard it so there are these two woodcutters one of them who's very hard working very very hard working you know he goes there early in the morning uses his axe cuts the wood throughout the day does not rest you know at every moment you can see him that he is constantly you know at his job you know sets it out amazing from morning till the evening he will do his job but there is a second woodcutter who along with actually cutting the wood he is he works i mean but he is not as hard working as the first one but he actually takes a break okay and does one other small activity along with cutting the wood you know what would that activity be anyone is aware you know that activity that actually helps him do even better than the hard worker yes uh, some of you would have guessed it he takes time to sharpen his axe sharpening the axe 
that gives him a better performance. So similarly, I felt that working on the mental aspects, okay, is like sharpening your axe. Very few of us take out time to do this, but if you do this, I mean, your performance will get better at all levels. You know, we can look at it in a very different way. We all work so hard on the strokes and yes, that is the base, correct? I mean, the technical side, the strokes, those are the weapons with which we actually compete or battle on the courts, right? Or on a sports field. But think about it. If you were to get better at the mental aspect, it will also give you a better understanding of how to use the strokes as well as your learning process of the strokes okay when the coach is there teaching you when you are out there playing your learning process will be a lot faster right so working on the mental aspect has a more direct impact on all the other aspects so from the top you can actually go down however if you're just working here and not paying too much attention on the mental aspect that creates a little bit of a problem and actually towards the end it slows down your progress right so what just think about all these factors confidence some of you are very confident at certain things at certain strokes correct but how can you become more confident? I was watching Sanya Mirza's interview, I think past Sunday, and she oozes confidence. Okay. Now, but can confidence be trained? Or is it something that you're only born with? This is where, so I remember uh, Heman Bindre sir, uh, you know, uh, telling me that there are his players and one of the best players uh, around right now uh, in India, Ankita Raina, uh, the top ranked player. He used to say that he can see that whenever Ankita is very confident, she will pull off a match. She will win the match. It is not a direct relation. Normally, always it's not a direct relation to how well you play, but it is actually a direct relation to how confident you are. And we've all gone through this, isn't it? If we are confident, we are able to pull off the matches, win those matches. If we are not confident, even in those things that we should actually be doing well or winning a tennis match or a tennis tournament, we lose. So confidence is also a state of mind. Coming back now to what top athletes reported, okay, when they played their best tennis. Now this is also called uh, in mental terms, it is called playing in the zone and it is also called as ideal performance state okay so these were the feelings that these people reported when they actually played their best tennis they felt profound inner stillness extreme inner stillness they reported time standing still they also reported exceptional personal awareness completely aware of what they are feeling and doing at that very moment remember this word awareness now we will talk about this going forward exceptional energy slow motion joy power and control these is this is what the top athletes throughout the world this is what they reported there is also this complete duality. Now, when you actually think of these words, just think about it. They reported they had very good intensity, yet were relaxed. High intensity, but relaxed. They were calm inside, but totally pumped up outside. Amazing duality, isn't it? To be calm and yet be very pumped up. Now, something that is not so easy to comprehend, but something that athletes have always felt when they played their best. They felt full of pressure. I mean, they felt that the situation had a lot of pressure, but they did not feel any of it. Even though the situation had so much pressure, they did not feel any of it. So, this is uh, what the top athletes reported. I will also draw your attention to, in fact, uh, this is a great book, um, the IDF Advanced Coaches Manual. Uh, the ITF actually uh, has now stopped uh, 
dating books, uh, but they have a beautiful app called ITF eBooks. I'll recommend and this book uh, during uh, this period of a lockdown is actually available completely free. Uh, you can go to the app and download it. In this uh, chapter seven, where they talk about mental training for tournament players. If the players who, are, who have a pen and paper, please note these down. These are amazing and maybe later on you can refer to this or you can of course download the book. This actually has a research of characteristics by great, great tennis champions to define how they if when they played their best tennis, how they felt when they played their best tennis. The first thing, having a stable mental state in control of their emotions. This was the first point. They felt mentally very strong and determined. They felt positive, but realistic. Highly confident, energetic and ready for action. They had focused concentration and were mentally very alert. Correct? They felt physically relaxed and calm under pressure. Okay, now our first session today has to do with relaxation and this is where it will come in. They felt physically relaxed and calm under pressure. Any example that comes to your mind? I think someone right here, uh, back, Roger Federer, completely so relaxed, makes it look so easy, right? Effortless, again, uh, he's the master when it actually, you, you can see all the top players, they make it look so easy, they make it look so effortless, isn't it? Everything seems to just fall in place so automatic. Lack of fear and enjoying the battle. We'll talk about this lack of fear and you know, fighting fears and the negative uh, qualities in our second session. Okay, in our second session of the three part series, we'll talk about fear. So, so lack of fear, but enjoying the battle, I think. Nadal is a master of this. He says that it is not so much about winning, but he loves competing. He really loves competing. In control and fully responsible. There are a lot of athletes who have problems with the mental aspects, now they end up blaming everything around, but they do not take responsibility. Why did they lose the match? Why did they perform bad? And there's always someone else to blame. Uh, that is completely inappropriate if you want to become great at the mental aspect. Enjoyment. Top players, they enjoy. On the tennis court, they enjoy. They're very happy. They smile. There is a high need for achievement and a drive to win. At the same time, they feel extremely competitive and play with high intensity, high energy. So, uh, of course, in this book, it will not be very clear, but I'll just, you know, this graph here, uh, this actually sums it up as to the four basic mental skills required for tournament play. Okay, this is what the research has said, and then, you know, they've crystallized into the four basic aspects. Let these thoughts, again, uh, you know, hang on. First, motivation. Correct. How motivated uh, the player is, how much effort that they put in. So if the player brings in motivation, I think most of the other things the coach can look after. You know, that's something that I really heard from a learned coach. So that is correct. Uh, concentration. Motivation was one. Concentration. Emotional control. And control of thoughts. So again, I'll repeat. Motivation. Concentration, emotional control, how well you control your own emotions. You, know, your, you control your anger, your disappointment, you know, your lack of drive and control of thoughts. These four aspects. Now, when I actually went through these, very clearly concentration and control of thoughts have to do with your mind, isn't it? How focused your mind really is. Emotional control has to do with two aspects and which is where heartfulness meditation comes in. Emotions are the interplay of your heart as well as your mind. It is the heart-mind field. Right? This is where all the emotions come up. The emotions that we feel on a tennis court. 
you know the challenge response sometimes the anger sometimes nervousness anxiety stress fear there's so much that we actually feel on a sports field clearly three out of these four in fact all four if you actually consider it can be brought about okay by good mental practices but unfortunately mental practices are not a part of our day to day routine very few of us integrate it we will spend hours on the court hitting the serves hitting hitting our favorite shots but if we could even let us say spend 10 15 minutes every day increasing our confidence just imagine if your confidence increases won't all your strokes get better wouldn't your game get better wouldn't everything actually just fall in place just if your confidence gets better you know which is why i would recommend and i'll take you through a set of all these practices which will help you okay get better at all these four aspects your concentration your emotional control your control of thoughts and it will have an impact on motivation okay so having said that let's now get into the two main practical aspects that we are going to do today this it's uh, very good to see uh, quite a few players that we join in uh, uh, a very uh, good morning uh, to all of you and thank you so much for joining in uh, i can see your comments uh, keep posting them uh, you know we will have some question and answers also later but uh, just by giving you a base and then doing this practically because i don't want to just you know, lecture i want people to feel you know how you would after these mental practices and then you know with regular practice you can carry it on the court so the two parts that we are going to do practically today are relaxation and meditation let's spend a little bit of time understanding relaxation so many players and parents actually report that the child the player plays amazing in practice but when they go and play in a match they they actually use these words that you know they there is probably 50% of his potential or just 10% of his potential uh, in practice they are so good however when the match starts they don't know what happens as a player i think we all know what really happens we uh, what really happens in practice how do we feel you know we without a care of anything in the world we are so relaxed we we flow we play freely correct however when the match starts exactly the opposite we tighten up we feel stressed anxiety we become stiff there is no flow there is there is so much effort that we actually have to put in to get in the same result so can relaxation help? clearly the more relaxed that you are in fact everyone has reported like i mentioned uh, those words that the top players say feel when they have their best but they feel so relaxed and effortless and again repeat roger federer is a classic example of someone who feels so relaxed you know you can you can see them you can see them and even all the top pros you know they make it look so easy so that is one part of relaxation okay two you know our thoughts uh, they run from here to there in the middle of a match we are actually thinking of either the past point that stupid mistake that we did or the next you know if i lose this game what will happen oh i'm i'm now up you know i should win this this point you know the next point one point the next game let's go you know there's so many uh, times that your actually mind keeps wavering from the past to the future the relaxation the heartfulness relaxation that we will do today is a wonderful way to bring your mind to the present to bring your mind to a body part to any of your body part that is stiff needs to relax the other way also and i've done this with quite a few of my players you know at the end of the day 
all tennis players all sports persons they will feel physically tired after a good workout after you know slogging it out on the court you will feel tired now when you feel tired it will be great if at the end of the day you can actually physically relax yourself so this relaxation will help you do that as well and last but not the least okay uh, this relaxation will actually tell you how powerful suggestions are you know this relaxation that we will be doing today is nothing more than positive auto suggestions you will see the impact when we do this you will actually feel the impact and see the impact so and you know these suggestions are so very powerful okay we'll talk about it once we finish the relaxation so we'll again do this in two parts let's go through the relaxation right now this will be a simple 5 to 7 minute relaxation in which i will be saying a few very simple commands very simple suggestions rather take your attention to that body part and you know you will see the result and and uh, especially feel how you what you feel at the end of what you experience at the end of the session at the end of the relaxation uh, this relaxation can be done at any point in time of the day uh, by people of any age group okay there is uh, no limit to that i do this with my 5 year old son he really likes it he in fact has given it a new name called relax station <laughs> he calls it a station so right so let's uh, go ahead and uh, experience heartfulness relaxation gently close your eyes let's begin the heartfulness relaxation by let your breathing be completely normal and natural gently with your eyes closed and your body in a very relaxed position let's bring our attention to our toes wiggle your toes move them the toes of your both feet wiggle them move them and feel that they are becoming completely relaxed feel that there is a healing energy from mother earth this healing energy from mother earth is coming into your whole body from the soles of your feet this healing energy will help you relax your whole body and strengthen your body feel the energy move in from your heels to the ankles feel the energy move up to your lower legs and to both your knees feel the heels ankles lower legs and both your knees become completely relaxed feel the energy move up to your upper legs thighs hips and the waist feel yourself easing into your position
feel that your stomach is now relaxed your chest and lungs are also relaxed bring your attention to your back relax your lower back spinal cord all the muscles of your upper back your entire back region is now relaxed your shoulders they are simply melting away completely loose very very relaxed feel the energy enter both your arms relaxing the upper arms elbows lower arms the wrist palm and fingers both your arms are now completely relaxed relax your neck and the throat bring your attention to your face feel that all the parts of your face are now relaxed the chin jaws lips cheeks ears nose eyes forehead relax the crown of your head the top of your head scan your entire system check if you feel any stress any pain any tightness on any of the body part wherever you feel the pain or tightness just take your attention there and gently suggest that it is becoming relaxed your entire body 
from the top to the toe has become completely relaxed. Keep your eyes closed. We will now get to the practice of heartfulness meditation. Keep your eyes closed. I will guide you through the heartfulness relaxation and meditation. We will now head to meditation. Gently bring your attention to your heart. Feel the joy, the love and purity present in your heart. Your heart is attracting your attention inwards. Make a suggestion that there is presence of a source of light in your heart. Do not try to look for light or to visualize any light. Just let this be a simple thought. If your mind wanders onto any other thought, just remind yourself that you are meditating. Very gently, very softly, whenever your mind wanders, bring it back to the source of light in your heart. Let this be very effortless, very natural. Do not use any force. Please continue to meditate like this. Till the time I say that's all. Whenever I, when I say that's all, you may open your eyes. Till then, let us continue to meditate. Do not force your mind. Just gently regulate it towards the heart. Let's continue with a lot of joy.
for better results please turn your phone ringer on silent so that it doesn't disturb you let your mobiles be on silent and you enjoy the silence
that's all you may very gently very softly open your eyes make a note again I encourage you to uh, keep a diary uh, to note down your experiences uh, after meditation even after relaxation it's a good idea to even note down things after your practice sessions uh, more about that uh, in the third session though but uh, just note down how you feel right now Yeah, I can see the comment, uh, feel very nice and relaxed. Uh, you can uh, write down uh, your sessions here, um, your comments here, your experiences. Um, actually, uh, from relaxation, we move to meditation. Uh, I will now, so I wanted to give you a practical experience of it uh, beforehand. and. Now we, we, we can actually talk about how meditation is different and relaxation is different and how meditation can help you in your tennis or uh, of course in any other sport that you do. more importantly in your life because uh, all the techniques that I'm actually going to share all the heartfulness core practice they have a wonderful wonderful impact on the way that we lead our lives right uh, so Okay, so let's uh, understand meditation. Uh, in meditation, uh, we actually try to have our thought okay, on the source of light in the heart. Some of you would have struggled. You have seen that your mind actually wanders uh, onto different places, isn't it? So, is that what happens in the match? Actually, uh, that's what happens in the past, future, very little in the event. So meditation is a very good tool, a very good instrument to regulate your mind. I'm not saying straight away, but because when you try and control something, suppress something, it will again, you know, have a spring reaction and very difficult then. So it is best to regulate it with this price. Yes, you will be able to regulate your mind. Uh, and to go in the direction in which you choose so i was listening to this very interesting uh, finding that a lot of fatigue uh, in a match is because our thoughts you know our thoughts keep wandering so many thoughts and the more the number of thoughts the more the fatigue this is where meditation can help in also when we meditate it, we are completely aware the word awareness that I've mentioned a lot of top players also support great personal awareness when we meditate in and day out with regular practice you will see that your awareness increases the more that you are aware of a lot of things of the way that you think of the way that you see your thought patterns as well as the different parts of your body and let's take this straight away to what happens on court you know the court, let us say gives an instruction bend your knee bend your knees you know you think they're bending your knees but without awareness do you really know how much you're bending i've actually taken out a video camera shown it to the players and their jaw drops actually, oh I, I don't i thought that i was bending so much i don't why does that happen Lack awareness. So the higher awareness, the better you will be in incorporating the instructions that your coaches give in incorporating the things that you, know, you want to implement. So like I mentioned in the beginning, mental practice helping you on court, whereas a lot of physical work does not necessarily 
physically if you mentally you know, what what do you do actually on the court let us say even if i play four five hours, does it improve my concentration not so but if i can spend like, again 10 15 minutes improving my concentration don't you think those four five hours on court will have a lot more value would it be a lot better so just wanted to leave you with these two things for now control thoughts or regulation of thoughts as we say through meditation as well as increase personal awareness okay now uh, i'll be happy uh, to take a few questions uh, here i i can see some very good comments uh, some uh, really nice players have joined us here. Uh, Bhakti is here. Some coaches are here. Uh, some felt extremely relaxed. Uh, some of them felt very energetic, very good and relaxed. One person reported almost felt, which is fine, which is completely fine. Just for our viewers, actually, I am on the Indian tennis stage uh, right now. So, in case if you can leave your comments, please come there and uh, leave it. I will not be able to uh, easily have a look at the fullness and the bath page where i'm also live now but uh, if you can come to indian tennis village and leave the comments uh, that'll be uh, fantastic i'll be very happy to answer that let me see if there is a way which uh, i can look at comments from uh, artful sale Um, yeah, let me let me have a look. Yeah, I think uh, a great question uh, from Nitin has just uh, come up. Uh, I'll answer that. Nitin, but let me also answer some of the questions. While this is uh, yeah, so. Uh, Okay, Kevin, uh, see, yeah. So, uh, then, uh, visualization this in, in mind, you actually, uh, try and, you know, have pick of how you want. Um, so, fine, I'll just uh, come back. So, uh, Nitin, uh, for the, uh, hello. And uh, so, visualization is wherein there is imagery. Uh, you get into a of details you fill your mind with so many details so many emotions feel this uh, you know as if you are on there and doing a particular thing so last week we got our uh, players uh, to practice visualization and let me tell you mentally you know pretty challenging but a wonderful actually uh, a lot of top players myself and i also recommend it uh, in visualization so i will let us say imagine myself serving playing someone on the court best to imagine it at the highest level uh, and only positives so visualization is again you key your mind towards good a particular and fill it with a lot of details emotions uh, feelings uh, you can leave a message and we can even talk over the phone you know about visualization meditation here is actually just having your mind on trying to have it on one thought okay in your mind be with one thought this is a connection so uh, what happens uh, when we actually uh, meditate your mind you will wander off to uh, different thoughts so you just slowly again bring it back to the same thought so meditation uh, has uh, very uh, inherent uh, benefits in terms of the training of the mind uh, you know uh, this is for everyone uh, your mind can be your best friend as well this, it can be your biggest enemy you know, it is just on the way how you train it and how do we train our mind by by actually getting into your mind and training it so it's like how do you build a car i mean even if i have the best, the supremely well written right manual in this whole world and i read it i learn it by heart would i know how to drive it uh, no so similar you have to learn driving a bicycle or driving a car actually getting onto the car and then you learn so similarly mental training and uh, meditation 
is done by using the mind to regulate it. Okay. So, uh, right. And now, really, uh, sorry, I think then uh, uh, here has to, uh, what are the correct timings uh, for uh, meditation? Actually, uh, we would like you to experiment uh, with heartfulness. Uh, encourage uh, you know uh, your scientific experiment you be the experimenter check uh, whether your morning meditation helps whether meditating at noon helps whether in the evening helps uh, my personal experience is the morning meditation is like, very helpful uh, ideally done in the morning but whenever uh, you can have time to meditate that is a good time to meditate and then slowly fix up your time for meditation okay make it that it is the same time every day we have lunch at a particular time we go off to sleep at a particular time in similarly meditation should also be at the same time okay so uh, again check for yourself when is it that when you meditate do you feel the best so uh, bhakti uh, uh, says that she wasn't trying and felt really focused uh, so i think uh, nipa shah has a very good question we need someone to direct us during this relaxation and meditation uh, with heartfulness meditation what we recommend is uh, you can have session with a trainer just like you had a session with me uh, you can have it virtually in fact heartfulness meditation is offered in uh, 163 countries uh, wide without any charge uh, we do not charge for teaching the relaxation meditation core practices of heartfulness it's completely free uh, as of now with this lockdown and uh, we are facing we will recommend you to use an app it's called HeartSap. okay you can download it and you can use it three sessions you can have three master classes in the app, and after that you can start practicing this mission on your own nipa uh, so the beginning this is how it will be and afterwards feel free to meditate on your own uh, you will always have the support of a trainer uh, you can always come up uh, we also present on uh, we have a website heartfulness.org on all the social media platforms it'll be easy to find us you can you know, get in touch with me message me feel free so akanksha Bhan, uh, it's great that uh, she was here uh, to attend. Uh, she felt a calm state of mind uh, similar to the best matches that she played uh, excellent that up akanksha uh, which actually brings me to this point that the reason for doing meditation if you note how you feed of it and you will find this remarkably similar to how you feel you are playing the, your best tennis how you the your best days in your life even if you actually uh, you know just know you feel on your best days how how connected you are you know how calm how peaceful how silent you feel, and yet very energetic so this duality exists but uh, with meditation you can always uh, have it answered what if you be restless during the practice uh, uh, so ramanan murthy has this question uh, uh, what if we are very restless during the practice because that happens a lot to me and i'm very angry uh, ramanan uh, this is what i'll answer next uh, week uh, next week we are going to have a beautiful practice uh, one of the best actually come across this mental practice of rejuvenation or cleaning that helps us remove these you know negative qualities within us Thing that holds us back we can actually react so uh, we will uh, i will share practice with you next week however it also helps so you know the more patient that you uh, the more understanding you will when you meditate you will start understanding your thought patterns and this has happened with me um, the more that i meditate more i understand how i think how i feel and that helps me change myself this again is self-aware uh, but see you next week uh, for sure, Ramanan. You'll have uh, you'll have the practical answer to your uh, problem. Uh, Kajal Kumar Samantha says, "Time should you meditate?" Uh, yes, uh, Kajal, uh, you can begin uh, with 50 minutes of meditation. Okay, uh, that's that great. And then uh, slowly uh, you can increase uh, to a maximum of one hour uh, of meditation at one go. So uh, the more that you meditate, the better. But Fix up your time in terms of you know it should be this many minutes. Sit in meditation, feel you will 
will with happens it is a lot about feeling and you will feel that the meditation you know is going well and there will be a time that it will stop in the best you can use an alarm clock and you know meditate for 20 minutes half an hour and then slowly increase it uh, kevin thank you for attending uh, uh, is looking forward to coming great um yeah what uh, so pankaj kukreti uh, is asking uh, an ideal time for a rest well year old uh, pankaj uh, my uh, feelings are i have a restless four year old five year old <laughs> who i deal with uh, so uh, do this relaxation do this relaxation you know two to three times a day uh, it goes off to sleep uh, with your uh, 12 year old this relaxation will help you immensely uh, also to viewers who have uh, kids below 15 years of age uh, beautiful practice uh, beautiful course psycho writer minds uh, which is wonderful to develop confidence uh, increase awareness in dealing with negativity in in people uh, so that is something that would recommend uh, to everyone between 15 years of age it's a brilliant course uh, you can to brighterminds.org to check uh, uh, the details however uh, pankaj please uh, use the relaxation uh, as many times that you need it will really help use it uh, before let us say you know he is about to study or before in this session also uh, after a tennis session uh, experiment it to experiment with it is just going off to sleep uh, that will really help. okay uh, yeah radhika mahajan from pune like the session thank you i also had a long uh of oh, uh, uh, manveer singh randhawa should gratitude uh, be a part of meditation uh, i was doing a session yesterday and uh, we said that uh, you know we can offer a grand prayer however uh, meditate on the heart and uh, i will dwell with you know why uh, with heartfulness meditation i mentioned that emotions right emotion and your uh, heart uh, is a combination of your mind and the heart correct uh, gratitude is also a wonderful feeling correct and the more that we meditate on the heart the more we feel it uh, sometimes uh, that feeling will come to you during meditation however uh, uh, you know uh, you can offer your gratitude uh, at point in time of the day uh, in meditation your mind rest on uh, the source of light in your heart however uh, feel free to offer your gratitude there and uh, normally with heartfulness meditation will feel like that becomes a part of your everyday life you will feel grateful for all the little things that we have around uh, thank you thank you question uh, thank you i think i've probably answered all the questions here uh, with uh, the on a page this and uh, see if i can answer a couple of questions uh, there yeah i think i'm unable to answer the questions from that page but i will surely write it. Um, so thank you so much uh, looking forward to the next session next sunday uh, you know hope to see all of you there uh, invite um, everyone else from the community even sports community i would say something uh, 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 for uh, you know the sports community. okay i think pankaj here uh, said uh, actually he actually meant the time duration per Uh, so heart, uh, the relaxation pankaj will last for 5 to 7 minutes so uh, that should be enough but that can be you know frequent interval say yes uh, people who are elder might be able to sit more but uh, some others uh, you know even uh, you know, I, i know quite a few uh, people who are not to sit for more than 5 10 minutes but that's okay let us just start this only with our suggestions uh, we will be able to uh, answer uh, there is a question the sound sleep uh, that will get answered uh, because the session will have a very positive impact on sleep we will dwell on that uh, later so uh, not to take up too much time i will uh, answer the uh, through messages you can personally text me i'm looking forward to the next session on the rejuvenation 
next session will rejuvenation a uh, very very effective way of change thank you so much everyone uh, for attending prayers uh, for a very uh, hoping uh, that you stay very healthy stay very safe thank you